Alright guys, I'm back with another video and today I will be showing you how to install Bind DNS along with Webmin because Webmin makes it easier. Uh, the only things you need are an updated Ubuntu installation which you can get with sudo apt update and sudo apt upgrade. If you don't have that, some of the commands might give you an error saying can't find this package or this package won't install and just basic command line understanding. Uh, you can use Ubuntu Desktop, but because this is a server, uh, I don't have one installed. If you want to install one, you can look how to install a desktop on Ubuntu server, or you can install Ubuntu that comes pre-configured with a desktop. And just as a side note, I am not responsible if you screw up your server in this process. Uh, you know, just, Make sure you understand what you're doing, and if you follow my steps exactly, then it should work, but I'm not responsible. The first thing you will need is to have your server open, either SSH into it, or physically with a keyboard and mouse. I'm using a virtual machine as my server already runs bind, so this virtual machine is just like a normal server. Uh, after you have access to your server, the first thing you will need is to go to webmin.com download.html. This will bring up the webmin downloads page, and the next thing you need is to... What I'm going to do is I'm going to make a downloads folder and then change it into it. This is just to keep all the downloaded files in the same spot. The next thing we're going to do is wget https colon double slash pr downloads dot sourceforge dot net slash web admin slash webmin underscore one point nine five five underscore all dot dev. Now, if you're not using a Debian based distro, you might be using uh, Red Hat or Fedora or CentOS, in which case you'd use RPM. Uh, if you're using Solaris, you would use a Solaris, zip for Windows. Uh, if you're using Gen 2, you probably already know how to do this and you don't need to follow this video. But um, after you have that, you can hit enter. Oh, it appears that I mistyped. That. Make sure you type it exactly, otherwise it won't show up. Now we're just going to wait for it to install. Or not install, we're going to wait for it to download. It shouldn't take that long if you have a decent enough internet connection. I'm just going to clear. And the next thing you want to do is sudo apt install dot slash webmin. What this does is it installs it using apt locally from the local Debian package. Uh, the reason we do this instead of using like dpkg is because apt will automatically install any dependencies that webmin requires because it is a pain in the butt to get all those dependencies installed manually because it might not download the right version if you don't type the commands but we're just going to hit enter you're going to want to press y and then enter to confirm that you want to do this now this is going to take a minute so I uh, just sit back and relax. Webmin is a pretty big uh, program, so it'll take a minute to install. Alright, sorry about that. It does take a little bit of time, but now that Webmin is complete, you can see right here it says, well I can't get my mouse to show over it, but it says webmin install complete. You can now log into https colon double slash your host name colon uh, 10,000. So that won't work natively if your home network isn't set up to use host names. I know mine isn't. I use my own DNS server, but uh, don't worry about that right now. So the next thing we're going to do is sudo apt install net tools. And this is a package that lets us check our internet 
interfaces and IP address. So if we type ifconfig and hit enter, uh, you can see where it says ENP0S3. That might be different for you. You might have multiple, but the only thing you're looking for is a network interface with the INET address, which is, in my case, 192.168.0.13, or 113. Um, that's going to be different for you. Uh, just make sure you get the right one. Now the next thing we're going to do is just so that uh, Webmin kind of screws around with the way it installs bind from what I've noticed. So we're going to install bind here. Uh, so if you type sudo apt install bind 9 and press y and now we're going to wait for this. This one goes much faster. It's not as big of a program. You can see now we're done. Now if you have a firewall enabled on your computer, which you can check by typing sudo ufw status status, uh, you can see mine is inactive because I haven't set that up yet. I will be showing you how to set up a basic uh, uncomplicated firewall or ufw in a later video, but we're not going to worry about that right now so you don't have to worry about anything. So now we're pretty much done using the command line. Uh, if I just check, we should be. So now the next thing we're going to do is go to https colon double slash 192.168.0.113 colon 10,000. So it's going to say your connection is not private. That's just because it is a self-signed certificate. Uh, if you get a professional certificate or if you get one from like Let's Encrypt, uh, you can change it, but we're not going to worry about that. Don't worry about uh, it saying unsafe. It's safe because it's running on your computer. And now what you see is this login page. Now you're going to log in as if you're logging into your computer. So whatever your username and password is on Ubuntu is what it's going to be. So if you type echo user, oh, echo user, you can see it echoed method because that's the user I'm logged in as, that's the user that I use. So if you just uh, check remember me and then hit sign in, this might take a moment depending on the speed of your computer. Mine is pretty slow because it's a virtual machine, as you can see with the CPU usage jumping around. Uh, I'm going to enable night mode just because it looks better. Uh, the next thing you want to do is click refresh modules. And don't worry about this. Now if you go to servers, you should see bind DNS server. Click on that. Don't worry. This looks very complicated, but I can assure you that it is not going to be at all complicated if you follow these steps. So the next thing you're going to want to do is create your zone. Your zone is like your domain name. So create master zone. And this is where you're going to put your, uh, what you want your domain name to be. So if you want it to be like google.com, that's what you would put here. For this, I'm going to use tutorial.com. And just to confirm that I don't own this, I'm going to ping tutorial com and you can see what the current IP address of that is uh, we're going to change that by changing our local DNS server now I just want you to keep in mind that this is not how you can create your own domain this will only work on your local network unless you configure it to work outside but even then uh, you want to be careful because international laws when it comes to domains uh, but if all you're doing is trying to create a DNS server to uh, communicate with computers inside your local network, then you should be fine. So tutorial.com. I totally forgot. You also need to put in your email address here. Now I'm just going to use email at email.com because I'm going to trash this virtual machine after this. But uh, put in your email here. This is just for... Uh, DNS sake. So now after you create it, you can see we are on a new page, which is edit master zone tutorial.com. 
the first thing we're going to do is go to edit zone options because this is the one thing I've seen every tutorial leave out where it says check names, ignore, where it says allow queries from, type any, then hit save. Now we are almost done. So now we're going to create an address record or an A record. This is typically typically in DNS when you think of a DNS server, this is what you think of. It converts your IP address to a name, your name to an IP address. You're also going to want to make sure that it says yes for update reverse because that will create a reverse record uh, that's just needed for uh, DNS sake. Now, uh, if you're creating a fully qualified domain, you would want to put in like method server or server one. But if you want to create like a domain, like you're running a website inside of your network, you don't need to put a name in. Uh, I'm going to not put one in for this record and I'll create another record just to show you. And for the address, we are going to put the IP address of our server which is 192.168.0.13. Remember, this address will be different for you. Now if you hit create, making sure you update reverse, you can see we have tutorial.com, default, uh, TTL address, all that. Uh, next, you, ha you actually have a DNS server now and you have your first record. Now, how do we actually use that? Well, uh, what I'm gonna do over my local DNS settings. Uh, this will be different for you, this will be different for your router, all that. Uh, if you're watching this video, I am sure you will know how, but I'm not going to get into that on this video. So, if you're on Ubuntu 20, you can follow this. Uh, basically, the IP address for your DNS server is the IP address of your server. Now you also want to make sure to have a secondary DNS server. In this case, I'm going to use Google's because I don't care. Google already tracks everything I do. Obviously, I'm on YouTube. Uh, now we're just going to quickly turn off and turn back on our network interface. And now if we open up, mind you, this is on my local computer, not the virtual machine. If we type ns lookup tutorial tutorial.com it didn't change over. That might be because of my other network interface. I should probably also change that one. Oh, so, uh, here dot one thirteen, comma, Google's uh, DNS server. Now I'm just going to quickly turn that off and then turn it back on. Uh, the reason I have two network interfaces is because I need one for my virtual machine and one for my computer. I'm not going to get into that, but just keep in mind you probably only have one. If you're using a wired connection, you will be on this page. If you have a Wi-Fi adapter, you will be on this page. Know that I am... Oh, you know what? We also totally forgot. You have to click Apply Zone in Bind. I am sorry, I'm jumping all over the place. But if you click Apply Zone and then Apply Configuration, that should be the last thing you have to do in Webmin, unless you're adding more records. But now... uh. We have that. Now I want to open up my terminal. If I clear this really quick and then do ns lookup, which is name server lookup, it's a DNS tool that's built into most modern uh, Linux distributions. Uh, Tutorial.com. You can see that the address that it points to is 192.168.0.113. Now, if we were to actually go to tutorial.com, uh, I don't have a web server running, but if we add the port 10,000, you can see that it actually does point to bind. And if we add the encrypted tag and then proceed, you can see tutorial.com 1000. This is the webmin server that is running. And just to prove it, I can log in with method. And here we go. We are on, uh, you can see method server.home. You can see all my comp or all the virtual machine specs, all that, servers, bind DNS, zones, tutorial.com, addresses, address. Now, what if you want to create a subdomain? Like, say you want 
www.google.com. Well, you would put www, put your IP address, hit create. It's really that simple. And now if we apply configuration, go back and uh, look up www.tutorial.com points to 113. Now what if you want to point to a different IP address? Well, you would just change the IP address here. Like say you wanted to redirect all traffic from uh, google.tutorial.com. Uh, let me just check really quick. Uh, I just copy that and paste it in here and paste it and apply zone. And now if we go to google.tutorial.com, it does give an error, but you can see this is actually Google. It does redirect to Google. Uh, it has to do with whole or Google's whole internal system. But I can close that now, and I can, if you want to delete a record, all you have to do is select it and then delete selected. Uh, if you wanted to create like a, um, you want to use server and then put in the address of your server. Whoops, uh, wrong button. Uh, now you have server.tutorial.com and apply. And now ping server.tutorial.com. I type way too fast. You can see it's pinging my server. Um, uh, that's how you have set up a DNS server. Uh, I'm sorry if I went a little bit fast. Feel free to slow down the video or uh, visit my Discord server that I will have linked in the description and feel free to ask for help on there. I will do my best to respond to comments but I obviously can't respond to all of them and YouTube's really bad at notifying me about them so your best chance of getting help from me would be visiting my Discord server. Uh, with that said, I hope this helped you because I know I would have loved to have a video like this when I was learning how to set this up. Uh, like it if you like it, dislike it if you don't. Uh, feel free to leave criticism in the comments. You know, I've heard way worse. Uh, and if you really like the video and want to see more videos, like I am learning how to set up a mail server. So if you want to learn how to set up a mail server, um, stay subscribed for that. Uh, like I said, I'll be setting up a firewall in the, probably the next video. Uh, I can show you how to set up a web server. All of this. Uh, feel free to subscribe so you can stay in tune.